me say something before we get there, because I've been talking primarily about young men. Let me say something about young women. I've asked the young men, are you a man? I asked the young women, are you women? Are you women? There is such an honor. There is such an honor in becoming a virtuous woman of God. And I will not stand in agreement with the feminists and all the other rabble who try to literally... Do you know that, that most women who teach on these things, the feminists and everything, they just hate women. They don't love women. They hate women and want to be like men. But the fact of the matter is, you were born to be a woman, a godly woman, and to take comfort and to take joy and to find glory in the full manifestations of womanhood. And when you are awakened to love, it is to set yourself by the side of your mother, by the side of godly women in the church, and to discover what it means to be a woman. The strength of it, the femininity of it, the nobility of it, everything about being a woman. Do you realize that because we allow our little girls to get involved at 14, 13, it just, the number just keeps decreasing. We allow them to get involved in relationships. And what are we doing? We keep them from ever learning the tools of womanhood. It could be so beautiful. It doesn't have to be so dark. Relationships between the opposite sex are always initiated by the man in Scripture. They are initiated by the man. I have found that women and girls have become so bold Raising, shameless in this area. But in the scriptures, and it's not a cultural thing, it's a biblical thing, the relationship is always initiated by the young man. It says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. It does not say, for this reason, a woman shall leave her father or her mother. But a man not a boy, a man shall leave her father and mother. Furthermore, in the scripture, every time a woman in scripture pursues a man, she's considered immoral. Every time. Every time. You say, well, this totally goes against our culture. Wouldn't you expect it to? If our culture is God-hating and truth-hating, wouldn't you expect it to? And, and women, look at this. The feminist will tell you that you ought to have the privilege of this. Do you realize why would you want to have to assume the task of the man? You're the queen sitting there on a the throne. He's the one who has to come crawling to you. He's the one who has to seek you out, find you. Why do you want to be running around the streets doing the same thing? There's a nobility in this. But the enemies of Scripture would seek to take something like this, this and twist it and convince you it's, it's treating women of something of a lesser quality. No, it's treating women as something of more noble quality. As a matter of fact, one of the, one of the ways in which you will know whether or not this person is the person that God has for you is this. They will promote your spiritual walk, not take away from it. But here are some very important questions that I always ask young men. Number one, are you attracted to her biblical beauty? Or, or are you attracted to her sensuality? Sensuality proceeds from a wicked heart. In Mark 7, 21 through 23, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting, 
and wickedness as well as deceit, sensuality, evil, slander, pride, and foolishness. Also sensuality is a deed of the flesh. In Galatians 5.19, now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality. A woman can properly, properly be called beautiful. A woman can properly be called elegant. But a woman who is sensual has an evil heart. Has an evil heart. I know personally, my wife and I have discussed this a lot because she, she talks to young women and things. I know many, many women who, when you look at them, you would think to yourself, what a beautiful, elegant Honestly, as a man of God, that's all you would think. Beautiful, elegant, fine, wisdom. And there are other women, young men, that do not carry half the physical beauty that if you're a man of God, you look up and the moment you see them walking into the church, you have to put your head down because of the sensuality coming out of their heart. Now, folks, this is truth. This is just raw bone the way it is. Young men, you run from sensuality. You run from sensuality because sensuality is just a public advertisement for the condition of the heart. You run from it. And young women, run from sensuality. Run from sensuality found in young men because it's there too. If anyone dresses or acts in any way so as to promote the frame of their body, it's sensuality. It's, it is. Beauty, yes. We should be a beautiful people. The Proverbs 31 woman, all indication is that she had a, a royal nobility to her. Beauty in Scripture, many of the patriarch's wives were considered beautiful and it was considered a virtue even. But sensuality, if you're attracted to that young man, it's also an indication of your own heart. And you're biting on a fruit that is forbidden to you and will end up turning to gravel in your gut. Now, also, I said, now, are you attracted to her because of her biblical beauty or her sensuality? Secondly, are you attracted to her virtue or are you attracted to her personality? Even good personalities can be misleading. You see, very misleading. You're not looking for personality. You are looking for virtue, for virtue. The Bible says in Proverbs 31.10, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Virtue. As the years go by, young men, I want to tell you something. Listen to me carefully. It will not be the physical that will endear you to your wife. It will be virtue. It will be virtue. When you see, if indeed Christ dwells in your heart, young man, then you will be attracted to the Christ that is manifested in her life. 